glory to Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about elevation. Let us go to the book of Judges, chapter 6. And to put you in context, this is a time when the children of Israel started to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And to punish them, the Lord gave them over in the hands of the Midianites, who were reaping everything that the children of Israel sowed. And so now it was time to raise a judge to deliver them from their affliction. And this judge is going to be Gideon. So we are in chapter 6 in the book of Judges. We go to verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash the Abai Ezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now the name of Gideon in Hebrew means a feller, a hewer, as in a hewer of wood, one who cuts down, or again, a mighty warrior. Amen. And so again, verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And so Gideon is wondering about why it is that the children of Israel are in a dire situation. Well, we know, brothers and sisters, from the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. You see, the Lord has this principle that when people turn from him, he uses affliction to get them to turn back to him. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. And so here, as Gideon is wondering why it is that his people are in this predicament, we have to know that this is the reason why. The Lord gave them over to the Midianites so that they would stop sinning against him, so that they would stop walking in unrighteousness and commit evil before his eyes. Now we read verse 14 again. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And so the Lord is insisting on the fact that he is the one sending Gideon. He is the one giving Gideon a mandate to go out to save the people. And so Gideon here is being established by the Lord. Remember how Paul always takes great care when he begins his epistles to mention Paul, an apostle, not of men, but of Jesus Christ, so that he can confirm that he is acting based on the authority that was given him by the Lord and not by another man. And this is one characteristic that we have to remember. Men of God are not elevated by another man. It is God who establishes. And here the Lord tells Gideon, Have not I sent thee? Now, remember who was the greatest man, born of a man and a woman? John the Baptist. And if we go to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 6, we read something very important. 
it's talking about John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. There was a man sent from God and his name was John. Now, when the people came to him, the Pharisees, and asked him, still in the Gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 19, and this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And so they sought to try to determine who he was, because the way he looked without the long robe, but having camel's hair for raiment, he did not have the appearance of someone who was of the standing of a Pharisee. But the Bible clearly tells us in verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And so it is God who establishes. And let us look further how he establishes people by continuing to read in the book of Judges chapter 6 concerning Gideon. And so at the end of verse 14, the Lord tells Gideon, have not I sent thee? Verse 15, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. We remember, brothers and sisters, from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And so we have a perfect example here in Gideon of someone who is being humble before the Lord, recognizing that he doesn't have amongst men in this world a particular standing that would make him higher than the rest. He's saying, verse 15, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And so from a worldly perspective, Gideon is not the one to be chosen to be the strong man. But what does the Lord say? He doesn't look to our outer appearance. He doesn't look to our past. He doesn't look to what we can do with our own strength, because it is through him that we can do all things. And we are more than conquerors in him. Verse 16, and the Lord lets Gideon know how he perceives Gideon being a tool, a vessel between his hands that he can use unto his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, surely, not probably, not maybe, because in him all promises are yea and amen. Surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And so the Lord is telling him, I am putting it on you. I am using you as a vessel to manifest my power and make sure that my name is great among the heathen. Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. For from the rising of the sun... Even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. The name of the Lord. It is important to him that it be not profaned, blasphemed, and he does not give his glory to another. And so in verse 16, the Lord is telling Gideon, I will use you to reestablish my name. You will smite the Midianites as one man. 
Verse 17, And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then shew me a sign that thou talkest with me. Gideon is being very humble. He is not pompous. The Bible tells us that before there is elevation and glory, there is first humility. And this is what Gideon is showing us right here. If we go to Proverbs 18, 12, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. Gideon will get honors, but before that, there is humility. Verse 18, depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And so Gideon is wanting to honor the Lord. He who honors me, I will honor. Amen. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And so the Lord has approved of Gideon's humility. And he plans to elevate him and to use him as a vessel unto the glory of the name of the Lord by setting the people free of the Midianites and using Gideon as one man. Alleluia. And this is the same type of faith that Jonathan had when he said, the Lord can deliver the people from the Philistines, even by one man. Alleluia. Now we move to verse 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it is yet in Ophrah of the Abai Ezrites. And so we have seen, brothers and sisters, in this chapter 6, that Gideon was chosen by the Lord. He was called. When he was tending to his business, not having any special status, but he was elected in secret. The Lord calls his servants in secret. It is not a public affair. It is not a public exhibition, but it is done in secret. You remember how Moses met with the Lord at the flaming bush. It was a personal encounter. You remember how the Lord called Jeremiah and told him that he had established him a prophet for the nations. Again, he was established by the Lord. You also remember how Samuel was called by the Lord, chosen, selected, and established to where the Bible reads in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 20, And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And so Samuel was established by the Lord. Just as Gideon was selected by the Lord, and the Lord told him, Have I not sent thee? Paul, likewise, as we discussed, always made it a point to say he was established by the Lord, and even claimed concerning his knowledge that he obtained it not of man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so Jeremiah was established, a prophet for the nations. Samuel was established a prophet and the people knew that he was a prophet. But when these men were called, it was a private affair. The Lord selects his workers in secret. And so when the Lord came to you to have a moment of intimacy with you, a private moment where he called you for a purpose, this happened in secret. And this is how we can discern how unfortunately today, many people seem to be called in a public forum where they get to the part of being elevated before men as they are acclaimed and established by men, but not by God. And yet there is a great worshiping of these men made to be openly called and selected by the Lord in a public manner. And so the elevation comes right away where the person has simply supposedly been called or selected by the Lord. Yet do we see in the Bible that this happens in a private setting. The Lord comes to someone and he selects them and calls them in secret. Now the elevation will come after. 
And in the case of Gideon, after he obtains victory, the people will want to establish him king, but he will not accept that proposition. But before we get there, we will look at chapter 7 to realize that the Lord always makes sure that it is not the person who is going to get the glory, but he himself, the Lord. In chapter 7, you can read in verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. You remember Nebuchadnezzar, brothers and sisters, who looked upon his kingdom and said, Have I not done this myself? by the power of my own hand. And while the words were yet in his mouth, the Lord struck him, and he was made to be like an oxen to eat grass. And so before the elevation, there is humility. And in that humility, the Lord makes sure that the servant understands that it is not his own power that is going to carry out the will and plan of the Lord. Now, if we go forward to verse 7 in this chapter 7, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. And so it is flanked by men who lapped the water like dogs, that Gideon will carry out the duty that the Lord has given him to accomplish, so that there is no glory for him. Now, because he will be used by the Lord, men will still have a tendency to want to glorify the man rather than glorify God. But the servant who understands that he is a useless servant, as is expressed in Luke chapter 17, 10, when I have done what the Lord hath asked me to do, I will then say I am a useless servant. And so here Gideon will be confronted with that situation. If we go to chapter 8, we go to verse 22. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And so Gideon here gives glory back to the Lord, even though he was used in a mighty way. And we saw Gideon, therefore, being selected in secret and staying humble before the Lord and the Lord making sure that he took away from Gideon anything in the flesh that may have brought him to understand that he had any power of his own, and flanked him with men who lapped the water like dogs, and then gave him the victory, where the only possible outcome was to give glory to the Almighty Lord. And yet, the people, being religious, being idolaters, want to look at the man that was used by the Lord to elevate him. But Gideon, as a faithful servant and a humble servant, says the Lord shall rule over you. So we see here, brothers and sisters, that the Lord chooses the weak to accomplish great feats and exploits by way of the almighty power of the Lord, being chosen as a vessel unto glory. And the calling of that servant was made in secret, and the elevation came later, where it became apparent and manifest to the public that this man had been used by God. But prior to the success of his ministry, he was not known of men. Prior to the success of the mission that he was given to execute, he was not elevated as of yet. But we see the opposite in our world today, where many people are setting themselves out to be great men, and they are establishing themselves as being men of God, of great status and great standing and reputation. 
And therefore, some men establish themselves, and they are not established by God. You remember Simon the sorcerer in the book of Acts, chapter 8. We read at verse 9, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. And so Simon the sorcerer was of those who established themselves and set up themselves before men as being great, though they were not established by the Lord. And another example, which would be more closely related to Gideon, is the case of Abimelech. And we read about Abimelech in the book of Judges in chapter 8. If we read verse 30, And Gideon had threescore and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. And so Gideon had threescore and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. But from one concubine, he also begot Abimelech. And if you look at Abimelech in chapter 9, you will see that Abimelech attempted to establish himself and to elevate himself in a position of power, where Gideon was minding his business and the Lord came to him to tell him, I am sending you, have I not sent thee? And you will defeat the Midianites as one man, because I will be with you, me, the Lord. Here, Abimelech in chapter 9, he will slay his brothers to eliminate competition as far as who should now stand in power after the death of Gideon. And we will read about Abimelech to see how he positioned himself to lift himself up rather than to be established by the Lord. So we are in Judges chapter 9. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbaal, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And so here it is men, out of the lusts of their own flesh, who will elevate Abimelech. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Berith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. And so he paid people, he hired people to be his escort. And he was flanked by them and they followed him. And this is the image of some idolaters to whom an advantage is procured and they will follow you. They will elevate the man and they will make it appear as if he has a following. But at the end of the day, this following is rooted in the flesh. And so this man is not accompanied by men of God because he himself is not established by God. And so he has an army, but it is not an army that is spiritual and celestial. It is not an army of angels ministering unto him, but men in the flesh who follow him and who will advertise him. You see, Paul tells the Corinthians, do we again begin to commend ourselves or do we need letters of commendation? No, you are our epistle written on our hearts. And so those who do the work of the Lord, their good works are going to be manifest. And these works can be observed by the effect of their ministry on others. The work that Paul did the labor that he carried out for the Lord, it was manifest in the way that it touched other people, that it was working with the power of the Lord. 
such that the faith that was imprinted on other people, it was a testimony in itself of the work that Paul did. And this abounded to the grace of Paul, and it became his epistle, his living epistle, and it was written on his heart. And so he did not need to command himself. He did not need letters of commendation, as others do, where they have a crowd following them, hailing them, and making some marketing effort concerning them to elevate them to a certain standing before the eyes of man. Verse 5, And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbaal, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And so Abimelech became king, but not because the Lord set him there, but because he set himself there, having set himself out to be a great one, just like Simon the sorcerer had given himself out to be a great one. But he wasn't rooted in the power of the Lord. Likewise, and interestingly enough, Jotham here, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, who was left and escaped from the massacre of Gideon's sons, he will tell of a parable where he will basically say that Abimelech is a bramble trying to stand amongst trees and trying to have authority and be a king when in fact he is nothing. And so, brothers and sisters, thereby, by the story of Abimelech, we see that there are men who try to elevate themselves to a position of power and claim that they have the authority of the Lord, but they have themselves set up their empire. Which ultimately brings us back in the beginning to Genesis chapter 11, where man used slime for mortar and they made bricks and they built their own tower in order to reach the heavens, trying to establish themselves by their own strength to reach the heights, to reach the heavens, when in fact you can only do that by the Lord and by way of trusting in the Almighty. So thus far, brothers and sisters, we have seen the story of Gideon, who was humble and elevated by the Lord, established by the Lord, and who was flanked by people who did not have strength in the world. He was flanked by the weakest men, and he obtained a great victory. And the Lord did this so that he wouldn't get any glory, Gideon, but that the Lord would get all the glory. And Gideon was humble, and he was used mightily by the Lord, who called him a mighty man of valor. And remember his name, which means great warrior or one who cuts down. And after Gideon was done with his mission, he gave glory to the Lord and refused to be elevated as a king. Whereas Abimelech, not even a legitimate son of Gideon, but the son of a concubine, decided that he would elevate himself to be a great one and even slew his brothers so that he would be able to promote himself as the king. Now, we remember, brothers and sisters, what happens to people who seek to obtain power by shedding blood. We go to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. Abimelech established himself with a bloodshed. And brothers and sisters, if we look at how things ended for Abimelech, we look in chapter 9, we go down to verse 50. Then went Abimelech to Thebes, and encamped against Thebes, and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women, and all they of the city, and shut it to them, and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower, and fought against it, and went hard, unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. 
And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head, and all to break his call. Then he called hastily unto the young man his armor-bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword, and slay me. That man say not of me, a woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father, in slaying his seventy brethren. And all the evil of the man of Shechem did God render upon their heads. And all the evil of the man of Shechem did God render upon their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal. You see, God does not acquit the wicked. He does not leave the unrighteous unpunished. And so God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech. He was judged because he even killed all the sons of his father, except for Jotham, who escaped, and all the men of Shechem, who had participated in Abimelech's venture, they were also punished. That's why the Bible reads, all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal. You see, Jotham, whom the Lord spared, or allowed to flee, He's the one now who pronounced a curse, telling the people, if you have done well in choosing Abimelech as your king, then let it be well with you. But if you have done ill in electing him king, let it fall back upon your head. Let us read in chapter 9, verse 19. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the man of Shechem and the house of Milo. And let fire come out from the man of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. And so you see, brothers and sisters, there are certain men who are not considered by this world, but who have the hand of the Lord upon their life. And when they speak, what they speak comes to pass because they speak with the authority of the Almighty who has given them a mandate to speak words on his behalf. And likewise, there are kings that are set up by the Lord and kings that are not set up by the Lord. This is why the Lord also says in the Bible, they have chosen kings to themselves, but not by me. You can read this in Hosea chapter 8, verse 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. And so there was a rebuke by the Lord concerning Abimelech who had elevated himself. And the words of Jotham, someone who fled, who was not considered by the people of this world, let out words, pronounced a curse that came to pass. Now, we will go and have a look in the book of Amos. In the book of Amos, chapter 7, and we will have a look at how Amos was also someone very humble. And ultimately, when he spoke, he carried the authority of the Lord. This again shows us how the Lord doesn't choose the mighty, but he chooses the weak to confound the strong. Let us start reading at verse 8. The Lord is speaking to Amos. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. 
and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, warns the king, Jeroboam, telling him that Amos has spoken prophecy that the land cannot bear. His words are dangerous. Verse 11, For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Now Amaziah is forgetting something. The Almighty Lord has said, The whole earth is mine, and where I send my servant, where he sets his feet, I give it to him. Verse 14, Then answered Amos, who was neglected, who was not considered. He's going to open his mouth, as Jotham had pronounced a curse concerning Abimelech and the people of Shechem. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. He received a mandate from the Lord. He was elected and established by the Lord to go and prophesy unto Israel. And it was done in secret. He was selected in secret. There was not a public announcement about it. But now the time has come for him to do what he was called to do. And now the public is going to be put on notice. But prior to that point, there was no elevation for Amos. Verse 16, Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land. And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his hand. And so Amos prophesies about the captivity, and he announces that Amaziah, his wife will be an harlot in the city, and his sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Remember the prophecy spoken against Eli about a sign which would consist of his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They would die on the same day. It came to pass. When a prophet of the Lord comes to speak, respect must be given to the word of the Lord. And here, a simple man, Amos, very simple as Gideon was simple, was selected by the Lord to be the man to speak here and deliver a message, as Jotham had delivered a message to Abimelech and the people of Shechem. And so again, the selection of a man, his calling, it is not a public affair. It is afterwards, once that person has been used, that it is made manifest to the people that he has been used by the Lord. And then there is a tendency to want to elevate him, but that man has to give the glory to the Lord. In today's world, we see quite the opposite. We see men publicly being held on a platform, held on a pedestal and worshipped, claiming that they're being called by the Lord, where in principle, the Lord should have called them in secret as he did for Samuel, Jeremiah, and Gideon, and Amos. And then eventually these men are recognized for what they are, but there is no ceremonial, but there is no elevation of these men without them being humble and being used by the Lord and staying humble and giving glory to the Lord. 
And even when they are elevated by men who tend to be idolaters, they refuse to be elevated in such a way and give the glory to the Lord, recognizing that they're useless servants. And so, brothers and sisters, we have looked at the book of Judges, chapter 6, chapters 6 to 9, speaking about Gideon and Abimelech, how one was chosen by the Lord and established by the Lord, and how the other tried to elevate himself into a position of power. We made a parallel with Simon the sorcerer, who also had given himself out to be a great one. And we realized that those who are chosen by the Lord, they are established by him. And this is why Gideon was told, have I not sent thee? You will defeat the Midianites as one man. And we saw in the case of Abimelech how Jotham spoke a curse unto Abimelech and the people of Shechem, saying if they had acted wrongfully, it would fall back upon their own heads. And it did. We saw the end of Abimelech, how he died, in a way that was shameful. And lastly, we saw that in the image of Jotham, Amos also spoke a prophecy against Amaziah the priest, who did not accept the words of Amos spoken on behalf of the Lord, even saying that the land could not bear the words of Amos. And yet was Amos chosen by the Lord, established by the Lord, as was Gideon, and likewise was a humble man. So there you have it, brothers and sisters, being selected by the Lord, called by the Lord, having an encounter with the Lord, a personal encounter with him, and then being used by him, and then having to deal with the fact that the people will see that you have been used, and there may be an elevation associated with that, but you have to give glory to the Lord. And we also saw that those who try to elevate themselves and commit iniquity, it will fall back upon their own heads. Amen. May you be blessed, brothers and sisters. In the mighty name of Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.